Hello everybody, Average Gamer here, and today we're going to be doing something different than Mech Warrior Online. That's right. What we're going to be doing is playing Hearts of Iron 3, one of my most favorite games ever. This is just a quick little intro video that'll be coming out, and uh, seeing how people <laughs> are, are interested in these videos. Um, basically, this is a grand strategy game based around World War II. Um, obviously, you can see from the Spitfire, and I think that's a DO-117. Not too sure. That's an ME 109 over there. I think this is a uh, late to mid World War II German bomber. But yeah, so this is Hearts of Iron 3. Um, specifically, their finest hour. I have all the uh, all the expansions and all that stuff. So, so I may you may see some things in my game that uh, if you have Hearts of Iron 3 or are looking at getting it, you may not have it in your version of the game. Only because I had it, I got all of it all in one shot about three years ago, or so, so, <laughs> well, let's get at it, right? So, it's a grand strategy game, based off of uh, 1936-ish, 1937-ish Europe, or sorry, 1936-1937 Earth, basically. <laughs> um, when I say that, I mean it's every country, every province, every army, every armored group, um, theater, and all that stuff that is known about. From World War II, roughly just just before it. Now everything's roughly around 1936, 1937-ish. Um, you may see mine says 1900s only because I have a mod that extends the timeline, so you can kind of ignore that. So what? Uh, I'm just gonna go there, just make things a lot easier. So what is Hearts of Iron 3? Well, Hearts of Iron 3 basically is you take one of the you can pick any country, or you can pick one of the major countries, obviously, in the Axis, the Allies, of the Common Turn. So the Common Turn are well, just the Soviet Union, which is rare. You can play as the Axis, which at the beginning, or 1936, 1937-ish, is only Germany. Later on, Italy, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Romania, um, Slovakia, um, to a lesser extent, Austria, Bulgaria, uh, Turkey, and Finland, and Japan, all kind of join in and try to beat up on the Allies and the Common Turn. The Allies are, you know, the UK, France to a lesser extent, um, and to a more extent, Canada and uh, and the US. Now, you can pick any country, even if it's not even a major power. So, for example, uh, I can play as I'll pick my the girl, my girlfriend's from Hungary, or her background's from Hungary. Boom. So here we go. We can play as Hungary if we wanted to. Um, not a not a you know, not a player of any faction, so we would have the option of going allies, Axis, or common turn, or just playing our own game, where we can watch all the major powers slug it out, and we can build up our own little military, our own little army, maybe even try to carve out our own little empire. Um, I played a game where I was playing with Bulgaria. I took over um, Greece, Yugoslavia, and Romania, and uh, and Hungary. So I had my own little empire here. I'm trying to make it my own little version of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. <laughs> and, you know, create my own little empire under the... I called it the Empire Under the Sun. Mainly because it was underneath these two. These two just Germany and Russia. Because they only had a small little sliver of land now to fight over. They just slugged it out and pretty much the, the front didn't go anywhere beyond this area here. Um, it wasn't too bad, actually. It was fun to watch. Um, they didn't go to war with the Allies. Because they just marched over Poland and then went right into uh, right into Russia, pretty much. So that's one th good thing about this game. It's not static, uh, meaning that it's never guaranteed as to what's going to happen. Um, the Allies in one of my games fell apart. Um, France actually, and I'll try to bump them out of the Allies soon, um, using we'll say some nefarious means. But I've had on multiple occasions where France has been knocked out of the Allies before the war even started. Um, I played as the Allies once and knocked Italy of the Axis with uh, spies and stuff. So, it's one of those games where it, it's almost set in stone. Like it, you, there, it, you are, you are going to get the war. You are going to get the war between the UK, Germany, and the Soviet Union, at least. Like, those three will fight, and they'll drag everyone else with them. It's going to happen. Um, Japan will automatically declare war on the U.S., um, whether it's a member of the Axis or not. Um, 
on June 7th, 1941, or not June 7th, December 7th. Um, so it's one of those things where certain things are just kind of, they're just kind of set in stone. But you can tweak them, right? If you're if the human player, if you play as Japan, Japan, over enunciated there, you may not attack the U.S., right? You may not. So if you play as Russia, you may not even involve yourself in Europe. You may go down and try to take over the, the Middle East. Um, or even try to take a huge chunk out of China. Try to take over everything over here instead and just kind of have a defensive plan over here. Um, I've had things where th it looked like the two of them um, did an alliance. So that's a really, really good thing about the game. Um, now when you get into more details, obviously, you can control full armies from the core level, which is a couple of brigades, um, usually four or five, up to an entire theater, which can, can which can have thousands upon thousands of uh, of, of troops. Um, and when I say troop, I mean specifically just one tile or a counter. Um, they use the NATO symbols for for most of their stuff. You can switch over to like you know a dude or a artillery gun or whatever to physically see what it is. But to be honest with you, to get the full immersion, I like to use uh, the NATO symbols or the counters. Now, uh, what you can do is you basically can set some things up here. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, we set the game to very easy, just because this is more like a tutorial game right now. Um, I can go into the edit game and, and change it a little later. But uh, right now, so it's 1936. Uh, we're going to set the game mode from initially. It's normal. Um, but we're going to change it to arcade. The only difference between those two normal and arcade is associated with your supply. So, you know, your your fuel, your ammo, your food for your troops. What happens is, in normal mode, all your stuff goes from your capital. Uh, Berlin's around here somewhere. And we'll actually take the roads and the rail and supply aircraft to your troops. So there's a little bit of a delay between the time you build your, your, your supplies and transfer your supplies around. If you go to arcade, it just goes from your capital boom, with your troops. Just easier for now, just to kind of show things are going on. Next thing we're going to look at is diplomacy. So these five things here are quite different. So first thing you notice is this player control for diplomacy. You can actually change it so the AI controls it, or you can control it. Same with all these down here. Um, you can say AI yeah, control, research AI, or slider AI, or player control. Slider AI is where you actually have basically a slider and you say how you want it. AI control means the AI just does it. It decides what to do and how to do it. And the last one's player control, it's where you make your decision. Now, for diplomacy, that's basically where you interact with all the countries around you. Um, trade deals, influencing them, Anything politically, you know, declaring war, um, telling what you're going to do when you declare war, you know, whether you want to, you know, con you know, conquer the country, puppet the country, take territory from the country only. Um, it's kind of entertaining when you play as Germany and only take Western Poland and leave a sliver of Poland left, because then Russia can't attack you. <laughs> it's kind of getting a little gamey, but uh, I like doing it, because it really kind of screws things up a little bit. Um, the next one's production. That's basically where you build everything from your industrial capacity, which in turn is what you use to build your stuff, to your infrastructure. So your roads, rail. Um, roads and rail are pretty much the same thing in this game. It's just infrastructure. But um, you also can build aircraft, or sorry, not aircraft, um, air bases, artillery, radar stations, later on nuclear power plants for power, stuff like that. Um, then you also build your troops, so your armor, your infantry, your aircraft, your navy, all that fun stuff. Next one's technology. That's basically just your researching options. Yeah, simple and uh, easy there. Politics, it's internal, so you get to pick your own little rules and laws in your own country, mobilize, demobilize, things like that. And last thing is your intelligence. That's basically your spy networks and your intelligence networks that are out to collect information from the people around you now. I, the mod I'm in, I, I will mention this now, kind of buffs up, I believe it's intelligence, uh, production, and uh, my resources. So you'll notice things are a little bit easier for me to build. That's only because I've gone and I've tweaked a bunch of things in the game just so that I can 
show you. So what next thing we'll do is our victory conditions. Now, since we have Germany selected right now, these are the victory conditions Germany has to win the war. Now, when I say the war, that's because technically, technically, there should only be one big world war, right? In this game, World War II, where Germany, the UK, and the Comintern just boom. I don't say UK, so the Allies, the Axis, and the Comintern just beat the flying fuck out of each other. But, I have it on occasion where playing as Germany, I never went to war with the Allies. I built up a navy, marched right over Poland, before the UK was able to, before the UK even promised their existence. And then I went right, then I just built up a military and went into the Soviet Union. Or no, sorry, built up a military and waited, and the Soviet Union attacked me. And then the two of us had a slugfest, and I took over Western uh, Western Russia. And then that was kind of like the First World War, because then a couple of the countries down here joined up into the common turn, because they were scared of me, because by my huge massive military might. Uh, Romania, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, and Slovakia, which was just a little country here. All these countries joined the common turn, and my forces just marched right down. So I pretty much had all of this, plus eh, Western Western Russia. So it was pretty good. Just done in Finland in the in the countries up there. So nope, Poland or Germany. So. These are all the options you have to do as Germany to win. So, for example, Operation Sea Line, that's the invasion, basically, of England. You have to control, you know, Cork, Dublin, Edinburgh, Liverpool, Birmingham, and England, obviously. Or London, sorry. Operation Barbarossa, you have to have, basically, all of Western Russia. Uh, you have to control Moscow, Leningrad, and Stalingrad. Which, naturally, <laughs> these two are hard for the Axis. Uh, obviously control London, Paris, which pff, will be easy, Gibraltar, Malta, and then a whole bunch of stuff in the Pacific. Singapore, Honolulu, uh, Manila, Batavia, no fucking clue where that is, Shanghai, and Port Mosby. Usually what I do, because I never get involved in Japan, just a personal, a personal thing, I drop those, but, but, I like to get involved in the Middle East, because I'm Western. So we want to control the Suez Canal, Kiev, and Baghdad. So, with that in mind, we've now decided, as Germany, our main priority basically is going to be Europe. We don't care about anything else. So now, you could theoretically pick Czechoslovakia, Austria, Yugoslavia, Romania, Hungary, Italy, Republic in Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, whatever. Um, you just will not get a victory conditions option. Because if you click and you're trying to figure out why it's not there, that's why. If you're not a member of one of the factions from start, you can't pick a faction victory condition. It makes sense. Um, only England, Germany, and uh, France, and the common turn, aka the Soviet Union, have those options. So, with that in mind, we're going to start the game here. Oh. Let's actually see how long we've been recording for real quick. Eh, 13 minutes. You know what? I'm actually going to put a cut in the video here. And in the next video, we will be um, starting our setup. The setup is uh, quite a little long, a little long, because I'm setting up a uh, a, um, a custom game, which is the best way to start a game. If you've never played before, um, you'll see the next couple steps. Now you'll notice that a lot of the numbers I have are going to be massively crazy. It's only because, as I said earlier, I've got a couple mods in the game and tweaks and stuff, just to make things a little easier to to show. So, thanks for watching. See you guys on the uh, see you guys on the battlefield. Bye-bye.